Section 14.5 is called directional derivatives in space. Remember, derivative is the slope of a tangent vector in a particular direction. It's a scalar. Now, when you talk about directional derivatives in space, in other words, let's add another dimension to section 14.4. That's really all it is. So it's a simple extension, one more dimension from one level surface to another. So this is a terrible picture. I couldn't get it any better, but I'll try to explain what you're looking at and we'll talk about what it means. So below is a graph of three level surfaces where f of x, y equals 16 at the point P. So my point P is right here. I don't know if I have a pen that will even do this justice here. Point P is right here and that's on the level surface where z equals 16, okay? Oh, sorry, where z equals 16. So there's point P right there. Now we have three level surfaces. This is my fourth dimensional object, f of x, y, z equals x squared plus y squared equals z squared, first octant, and the different z uh, w values in this case I've chose is 9, 16, and 25. All right, so from here, you see we have three vectors that are pointing in different directions. These are all unit vectors. So we have a unit vector pointing towards that surface. We have B pointing in this direction. We have C pointing in this direction. And D is here pointing in this direction. Again, really hard to see, but hopefully you'll do your best. A is perpendicular to the contour and C is also perpendicular to the contour. It says here that D is tangent to the level surface at point P. So D is tangent, A and C are perpendicular, and B is just pointing towards this level surface. So here, that level surface is Z equals 16, this is Z equal 9, and this is Z equal 25. Now, you, you may not know how I know that, so let's talk about how I know that. Let's pull this away just slightly so we can see this. I know I'm a little primitive. I'll get better at this one day, but right now we just got to deal with what we can. So remember our, hold on, let's do this a little bit further. All right. Our surface was defined as f of x, y, x, y, z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And what I did here is I replaced the w value, the f of x, y, z with 9, 16, and 25. So 9 equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's a sphere of radius 3. That's why that is where z equals 9. There's my radius of 3, just a piece of the sphere in the first octant. Then I have 16 equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's why this is a piece of that level surface 16 with a radius of 4, spheres of radius 4, square root of that. And then the last one would be a sphere of radius 5. That's why we have you learn the different surfaces. So you can see that this has a radius of 5. This is the piece of sphere in the first octant, radius 5. So that's how I know. Now P is sitting on the level surface where Z equals 16. And we what we really want to do is determine the sign of the directional derivative in the direction of each unit vector given. Now this is a fourth dimension, so we don't have any real surface to look at. We can determine if, if you know, much because it's, again, fourth dimension. So what we do is we write it as a contour of three dimensions, in this case, concentric spheres, and then we take a look at how z changes in that direction. So let's start with the directional derivative in the direction of A. So if I'm sitting here on this surface and this is perpendicular to the contour of greater Z value, you have to think to yourself, well, am I going up or down? Well, I'm going from Z equals 16 up to level 25. 
So I am increasing in that direction. And I'm increasing perpendicular, so that's probably the direction of greatest increase. So right now I am going to say that f sub a at x, y, z, or I would say f sub a at the point p is positive. And also probably the direction of greatest increase. because it's perpendicular to the contour, just like it in the previous section we talked about it that way. Now let's look at f sub b at p, f in the direction of b. So here I'm at p, I go in the direction of b. Well, b is pointing towards a lower value of z from 16 towards 9. So that means my derivative, I'm going down from 16 to 9, so that should be less than 0. Just like in Calculus 1, if you're on a surface and your derivative is negative, that means the function is decreasing. If I'm on my surface and my function is decreasing, that means my derivative will be negative. Now, f sub c at p. c is perpendicular to my contour and pointing towards 9. So I'm going to tell you that that's less than 0, like f sub b was. But since it's perpendicular to the contour, it's actually the direction of greatest decrease. So if you have the direction of greatest increase and you just turn the vector around, you get the direction of greatest decrease. Same thing. And the directional derivative, or the derivative, will be negative. And then last but not least, f sub d at p. Now, d is tangent to the contour. So you have to say to yourself, well, am I changing heights? Am I staying at 16 or am I going up towards 25 or down towards 9? Well, if I'm staying on the contour, I'm not going anywhere. So my directional derivative in the direction of d would be equal to 0. d is a direction with no vertical change. And it's okay for a directional derivative to be zero. But this is how we are looking at four dimensional directional derivatives um, based on if we're going up or down and in a three dimensional contour map. Now the new directional derivative formula, da 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 da, s sub u of x, y, z. Don't make this hard on yourself. All you have to do is take the one you learned in the previous section and add an extra dimension to it. So this is going to be f sub x, x, y, z times u1 plus f sub y, x, y, z. That's the point that you're sitting at, u2 plus f sub z of x, y, z at u3. So not so crazy, not so different. So if I wrote it in terms of the dot product, I have f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. I'm doing a little shorthand, leaving off the, the ordered triple there, dotted with u1, u2, u3. So that still has to be a unit vector. This is still the gradient vector. Nothing changes. Now this guy is a gradient vector, so let's talk about the gradient vector in space. Here are our properties that aren't much different than they were before. If f is differentiable at the order triple abc, that means that the derivative exists at that point, and u is a unit vector in some direction, then f sub u at abc equals the gradient of f at abc dot u. So this is the formula for the directional derivative that I just showed you up here. And this separates it into the gradient and then the unit vector in the direction that you're going. So if, in addition, the gradient of f is not zero vector, then the gradient of f at a particular point is in the direction of greatest rate of increase. The gradient of f at a particular point is perpendicular to the level surface, just like a, A is a direction of greatest increase perpendicular to the level surface. And then if I found the magnitude of the gradient, 
That's the ma maximum rate of change at the point A, B, C. So you can see there's similarities. It's just that when we add the extra dimension, we have to actually think everything in terms of level surfaces, much like this picture. So that's the only difference, but the calculations and the mathematics is just one little tiny extension of this third term right here. Let's go the next page. It says you're going to try this last problem. Calculate the directional derivative from the given point in the direction stated and interpret the value you come up with. In other words, what does it mean? I give you the answer there, so you should be able to check your work and then talk about what that means. All right, good luck.